Welcome. Thank you so much for joining again on our online services. As you will see, we're making some small changes as we proceed forward. Today is July 5th. This is the very first Sunday of our hybrid ministry in which we are starting to regather. We're starting to make some changes in the sanctuary. We're starting to make some changes with the technology. One thing we are hopeful to do is move from the pre-recordings to the live streaming. But that's been a lot more difficult than we originally thought. Just a lot of different things to set up, a lot of different moving pieces that we've had to lay down together. So until we can get everything perfected and done well, we feel this is our best option for the time being. So we're still going to continue to record our messages, put them up on YouTube. I'll continue to share Saturday night. But once we get up and running with the live streaming, it's going to be able to flow much better as well. So thank you so much for your patience. Thank you for still logging in and being part of our worship service. We know as we move into this hybrid ministry, one of our worries is that those who are not joining us physically might feel a little out of place or forgotten. But we really want to remind you that you are valued that you are an important part of our church. And just because you are not ready, just because you may be at risk, just because you may not be comfortable returning to our church sanctuary, we want to make sure that you are not forgotten. So please continue to reach out to one another. Continue to reach out to myself, to any of our church leaders, our church office, and we would love to know how we can come alongside of you, how we can pray with you, how we can continue to support you. And as you've seen on our email this past Saturday night that I sent out, is we have a list of procedures that we are starting to take. These are temporary changes that we are putting into place so that our sanctuary can be safe but sacred. And we want to make sure that we are loving one another. You may not be at risk to catch COVID. You may not even be worried about COVID. You may have realized that you have the antibodies against COVID. But we want to make sure that we are truly loving our neighbors. So we are asking for each and every person who enters into our church building to follow those procedures. They will change over time. Our church staff is making these decisions and our church leaders are making these decisions through prayer, through wisdom, through discernment, through looking at God's word. And that is the greatest commandment that Jesus gives us in, in Matthew 22, to love your neighbor as yourself. And so we are going to also be looking out for those who are more vulnerable. We see that in Paul when he says that in Romans 13. I'm sorry, Romans 14. That we need to look out for somebody who may be more vulnerable. And that's exactly what we are doing. We want to make sure anybody who steps foot into our sanctuary when you are ready at your own pace. That you feel welcomed, loved, but safe. We don't want anybody coming into our church worship service worried about getting sick, worried about what somebody else is doing. We want to make sure that you can enter into our sanctuary, come in here to worship, to pray, and to honor our God. And lastly, as we continue to receive these guidelines from the states, and we see they're simply guidelines set for our safety, set for our standards. And we see in Romans 13 that we are called as Christians to respect the authorities at hand, we are called to respect the authority of the church hierarchy, and our church hierarchy has been making these decisions, again, through careful and prayerful consideration. And we are doing this not just for you, but for the person next to you. And we are trying to make sure that all can come and fully engage in our worship services. So as we begin, today our sermon is Daniel 3, verses 13 to 18. Then Nebuchadnezzar in fury rage commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they, they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered them, said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, tigorn, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music to fall down and worship the image that I have made well and good, but if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king of Nebuchadnezzar, We have no need to worship you in this manner. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, 
O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Amen. <laughs> This is the very first Sunday, July 5th, that we are regathering as a congregation. And I've been debating since March what I wanted my first sermon to be when we had this opportunity to regather. It seemed like every single day, every single week, every single month, something changed. There was another topic at hand. There was something else that we as the church needed to address However, I kept coming back to Daniel 3.18, one of my favorite verses, and it says, But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. And I love this verse because it shows the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They knew their God was able to deliver them, to protect them, to sustain them. But if not, if God did not answer in the way that they expected, they would continue to remain faithful and obedient to him. And we see about this passage, I'm sure this is a very familiar passage to all of us. Though I think we often focus on the big details and don't always pay attention to the small details in this passage. You see, in verse 7, King Nebuchadnezzar had constructed this carved image, this this being, this, this idol that whenever music was played, people would have to fall down and worship it. And we see in the original Hebrew in, in verse 7, it's like this immediate response. As soon as they hear, they fall down immediately on their knees to worship. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not willing to compromise on their faith. They were not willing to worship any other god but the one true God. So what happens is they are brought before the king by these people who oppose them. Why? Because of their rise to power. And the king, oh, this gracious king, right, gives them power to repent. says, so I'll give you another chance. And they play the music, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego still do not bow down. They still do not worship. So what does the king do is that he heats up this furnace. The Bible says seven times hotter than normal, as hot as this furnace can get. And he goes to show them into the furnace. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were willing to remain faithful. They knew God had the ability to deliver them, but if he did not, they would continue to worship the one true God. And as we move forward into this new normal, this is a new time for us of hybrid ministry. We have People regathering in our church. We have people who are staying home and continuing to watch us online. And both is wonderful. But this is the time of unknown. This is a time for us to remain faithful. For us to remain obedient. To know that we serve the God who is able. Who is able to bridge this gap. Who is able to do all these wonderful and great things. And we will continue to worship him and serve him. But if God does not move in the way that we expect, we know that he is still God. I'm sure many of us have felt that way as we've been going through COVID, as we've seen these racial tensions all around us, is that we have all prayed for specific things. And I'm sure God has not always answered in the way that we expected. And we need to have this but faith that we see in verse 18 that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have, is that they have this but faith. Faith, but if not, 
Too many times we focus on what God is not doing instead of what God is doing. As we move into our sermon, I'm sure none of us ever want to be called a butt face, but I hope by the end of the sermon that we want to have true butt faith, where we know, but if not, we will still remain faithful to our God. So we begin our message. If you just take some time and join me in prayer. Father God, I just pray that as we begin this regathering process, that you will deliver us, God. Deliver us from our poor expectations. Deliver us from our fear. Deliver us from the unknown, Lord. Deliver us into your hands. God, I pray that you will protect us. Lord, there's a lot of unknowns as we proceed forward, and we are moving forward in wisdom and discernment. We are moving forward prayerfully. But we just pray that you will protect us from any harm. You will protect us from any sickness, Lord. You will protect us from anything. Lord, I pray that our church can continue to be a safe and sacred place. And God, as we begin this hybrid ministry, I pray that you will just be able to sustain us. Lord, allow us to continue to remain true in our fellowship, remain true in our faith, remain true in you. And God, I pray that you will just be able to unify us. Lord, I look around social media and the news, just in the world around us, and I see a country that's so unorganized, ununified. But I pray that we will be united through your faith, through your spirit, through your blood. Lord, that we can be a church as your word says, that they will know that we are Christians by our love by our love for you, by our love for one another, but also by our love for the community, our love for those who are oppressed, who are broken, who are hurting. Lord, I just pray that we can share your love with all who enter our doors, all who view our services, and with all we come in contact with. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So I want to look first at verse 15. When King Nebuchadnezzar, he says, Who is this God who will deliver you out of my hands? And when we read through the scripture, we see God is lowercase, right? A small g God. King Nebuchadnezzar says, Who is this God? Look at everything going around. Look at my power. Look at my might. Is there a God who is better than me? What God will deliver you? And as I think about us today, as I think about the current events, I wonder how many people are saying that. I wonder how many people are saying, where is this God? Who is this God? Who is this small g God who you serve? Where has he been? And I love how, how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they have this absolute faith where they're Faith does not waver in the face of adversity, in the face of the unknown, that they remain true and firm. And King Nebuchadnezzar, he doubts the power of God. He doubts this God that can deliver. Why? Because he's more focused on his own power. So he says, I've made this decree, right? Who dares defy it? You? Well, you and who else? Where is your power? Where is your might? And I think too often times, is again, connecting back to the society today, is that we as humanity continue to put our power and our might above God's. Is that when all hope is lost, we turn first to ourselves instead of God. But we serve a God who is able to deliver. We see a God who wants us to remain true in our faithfulness, our obedience, and our surrendering to him. You see, King Nebuchadnezzar was focused on results not faith. As I look around in this world around us, I see so many people who are demanding God to act, who are expecting God to act, who are testing God, who are saying, God, small g, where are you? But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how many times can I say there's three names in a sermon were focused on faith and not results? And there are times when we focus on the results, there are times when we want God to answer in the way that we expect, but he doesn't show up in our results. He shows up through our faith. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had faith over 
fear. They realized that deliverance was not always physical. Deliverance was not always results. They knew they served a God who could deliver. They knew they served a God who was able. But even if not, they would never bow down before the king's image or serve his gods. God then intervenes through their faith. They had faith to walk to the fire. And verse 27 tells us that the fire did not have any power over their bodies. The hair on their heads were not singed. Their cloaks were not burned. And the smell of fire was not even upon them. However, we see in verse 25 that the only thing the fire consumed was the bounds. God took away their restrictions and God delivered them through his protection and his freedom. But we need to know that taking precautions is not living in fear. You see, we as Christians, what it means to have faith over fear means that we proceed forward through our God knowing that he will burn up our restrictions, that he will burn up the bounds that tie us together. If we were the underground church, if we were being persecuted for being Christians, right? would we erect a building right in the middle of the town and ring our church bell every single Sunday morning to show that we are gathering? No. We would find ways to take precautions to safely gather, but to worship our king. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had this faith over fear, is that they never wavered. And I wonder if they thought they were going to be consumed. I wonder when it crossed their mind that God was among them. Was it when they were captured? Was it when they were brought to the king? Was it when they were led into the furnace? Was it when they were walking the furnace? When did they realize that they could not even feel the heat And the church is not here to make a political stance, but to preach gospel freedom. And that's our heart's desires, is that we can gather as brothers and sisters in Christ and share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Having faith over fear means that we move forward following God's calling, no matter what lies ahead. And we need to take precautions as we move forward, as we continue to make decisions and prayer, and wisdom, and discernment, and spirit, and in truth. And we need to realize that God will not always deliver in the way that we expect. Verse 18, but even if he does not, they were ready for a no. Are you ready for a no when you pray? Are you ready for that, but even if not, I will still worship you. I will still serve you. But even if not, sometimes we do not have that faith. Sometimes we want results over trust. We need to realize that life is not being glorified. Life is not about being comfortable. Life is not about getting what we want, but about giving that glory to God. We do not always see his plans for our life. We do not always see his deliverance, his protection, how he sustains us. And that's okay because he is God, not us. And we know that we serve a God who is able. We see this in verse 17 when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say that our God who we serve is able. And I want you to hold on to that truth. The God that you serve is able. And what do you need deliverance from? These past number of months have been difficult and trying, but uniquely for each and every single person. Certain things have been tough. Certain things have been challenging. There have been new obstacles, new roadblocks, new hindrances. People have faced burnout, discouragement, heartbreak. But we serve a God who is able. And we need to trust in God because He is able. Bear with me with a silly analogy, but I hope it makes sense. Have you ever tried to open a jar before, but you just couldn't get the lid to budge? What do you do? Are you the type of person who feels that you have to open it with your own strength and you're twisting so hard, your face is turning red, you're not breathing? Are you the type of person who decides 
Destruction is the best way to open it, right? You take that jar and you bang it on the edge of the counter. Are you the innovative person, right? Somebody who goes and looks for like a paper towel or that there's openers with a little bit more grip and you go and find it to open it. Or are you the person who asks for help? Who sees somebody else in the room and says, hey, can you open this jar for me? And you see, this is exactly the kind of people that God is calling us to be. To know that he is able. So many times we take everything into our hands. But what does Jesus Christ tell us to cast our burdens? Where? Upon him. Why? Because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And we need to trust that he is able. Whatever we have in our hands, whether it's a jar, whether it's burnout, whether it's frustrations, whether it's stress, whether it's anxiety, whether it's unknown, whether it's worry... That our God who we serve is able to handle those things. And sometimes we act as if we are able. Sometimes we act as if nothing can go wrong. We have to have everything mapped out. But what happens when plans do not go as we have decided? We get angry. Right? We get upset, but that's okay because we have a God who is able to to steer when all hope seems lost. We have a God who is able to lead us to new heights. And when we recognize that we have this God who is able, that he is the one who delivers, that's when we can have this true but faith. That's when we can say, but Lord, your will be done, not mine. But even if you do not, I will not stop praising you and worshiping you. And this season that we've had, it's been difficult to have but faith, right? I have been praying for specific things, and I've had to add this to the end of my prayers. But Lord, even if not, we know that we still serve a God who is able and who will deliver in the face of the fiery furnace. But even if he does not, and God took them to the fire. God took them into the furnace. He allowed them to be led. And what does the scripture tell us is that as those who were leading Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as they approached this furnace, they were the ones who burned up. They were the ones who were consumed. And then in verse 25, their bounds are free. Their restrictions are loosened. And what does King Nebuchadnezzar see? He sees four men walking around in this furnace untouched. And as a result of their faith, King Nebuchadnezzar actually glorifies God at the end of chapter 3 and the beginning of chapter 4. But look at how he acknowledges their God, is that he says, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You see, he was willing to acknowledge, but he was not willing to admit that this God was the ruler of his life. And oftentimes, I think we look at these passages, we see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as we look just further down, we see Daniel in the lion's den. We see these wonderful passages about these individuals of faith stepping up and being these true heroes, saving the day. And I think too often, we think of Christianity as us being heroes. But really, Christianity is about praising the hero. How many times do we read through David and Goliath? And I sure hope we don't identify ourselves with Goliath. But I think we identify ourselves with David. Right? We think, well, we're the underdog. We're the one who's going to save the day. We're the one who's going to conquer. But no. We're those people who were on the outsides. We are those people who are shaking in their armor. We are the people who are longing for a hero, longing for someone to come and save the day. Well, good news, because our God is able, our God can deliver. And when we have this but faith, when we know this and we can move forward in that faith, we can move forward and go to that furnace when we believe that all hope is lost. That is when God will intervene. That is when God will continue to work. And as God calls us, I think too many times as Christians, we treat our faith as behavior modification. But we really need to be people who are looking for glory restoration. You see, too many times if Christianity, we're worried about fixing our behaviors or getting these 
results or seeing God work. But when we have true but faith, we realize that we are giving glory to God no matter what. Whether we are scattered, whether we are gathered, whether we are united, whether we are apart, we will never cease praising our Savior. As we see through the scriptures that there's this one, the image of like one of the sons of God who is walking among them. And I read through Isaiah 43, 2, which says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. I believe this is prophecy for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but I believe this is prophecy for us today. Our God is with us. The rivers will not overwhelm us. The fires will not burn us. The flame will not consume us. It may feel like all hope is lost. It may feel that the thing that God has called you to is unattainable. You may wish that you were like Jonah and ran the other way. But we have a God who walks among us, who will not allow us to be burned, who will not even allow the fire to scorch any hairs on our head, who will not even allow the smell of fire to be on our garments. God is calling us to walk through the flames, but fear not, for he is with you. And all our flames are different, but we all have the same faith, the faith that Jesus Christ has dwelled among us, the faith that Jesus Christ has come to deliver us, to sustain us. And King Nebuchadnezzar does not even accept God, right? He makes this decree saying that this God is allowed to be Praised, but he's still not willing to change his heart. Though Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they have this true but faith. They are willing to move forward even when they don't see the results that they want. And as we continue with this time of hybrid ministry, we need to realize that God is not on our side. Instead, we are on God's side. And we move forward in our faith. We move forward through the Spirit. We move forward through the leading of God. And we know that we are going exactly to where He is calling us to do. And as we finish up our sermon, I just want to ask you, what are your bonds? What is that something that you need to be delivered from? What is holding you back in your faith? How? Can our God who is able, how can our God who can deliver give you that freedom? And right now, today, God may be leading you to that fiery furnace. But as we look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we realize that their bounds, the thing that restricted them, that was what the fire, that is what the furnace consumed. Not their bodies, not their faith. And definitely not their God. Sometimes our Lord is leading us to that fire so that he can give us that true gospel freedom so that everything else that is weighing us down, everything that is bounding us together, everything that is being restricted from us can be burned up in those flames. Trust in him. Move forward with that but faith, knowing where God has called you, knowing what God is calling you to do and that we can walk forward with him. If you would join me in prayer. Father God, I pray that we can have true but faith. But even if not, Lord, let us continue to worship you. Amen.
Well, thank you for joining us for another Communion Sunday. We are glad that you're here to worship with us, to partake with us. If you've not done so already, please feel free to grab your elements, whatever you have, so that you can break the bread and drink the blood of Jesus Christ with us. So we began to look at dates for regathering. We were looking at July 5th, and we quickly realized it was Communion Sunday. But we knew there was going to be a lot of obstacles to find ways to uniquely serve communion safely. We knew it was going to be a lot of work, but we really wanted to regather on the first Sunday of the month so that we could partake in communion together. Because how wonderful after so much time apart that we could come together and share in the body of Christ and in the shedding of his blood. And as we move into this time of just quiet meditation, if you would just take a moment as Misty ministers to our heart to reflect, to examine yourselves, to confess your sins, and pray for the wholeness of Jesus Christ. Father God, we are grateful. Lord, whether we are gathered, whether we are scattered, I think of James writing to the churches in dispersion, the scattered churches, Lord, so that even though they were not with one another physically, they were still reunited through your teaching, through your word, through your spirit, through your love, but above all else, through the shedding of your blood, the breaking of your body, the assurance of the forgiveness of sins that we have through you. And Lord, I continue to pray for your redemption. We see the earth is groaning out for your healing, for your wholeness, for your peace. Lord, I pray that we can continue to seek you day in and day out. That we can be people who not only receive your redemption, but that we can be people who live out your redemption. Lord, allow us to reach out to our brothers, our sisters, our friends, our neighbors, 
Lord, to reach out to anyone we come in contact with to just share the love that we have in you. God, as we take this time, we examine our hearts. We realize, Lord, that we were far off, but we have been brought near by you and through your death and resurrection. God, may we continue to move forward in your glory, in your grace, in your restoration. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So our scripture passage is a little bit different than typical, but I thought how appropriate. We were just looking at the church as our, at our previous series, and we see in Acts 2, verses 42 to 47, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and the fellowship, and to the breaking of bread, and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with gladness and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day, those who were being saved. As the ways that we have worshipped have changed, the one who we worship has not. And we continue to go with him, approach that throne with confidence because of the breaking of his body. And on the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took his cup and said, This is my blood, my blood shed for you for the assurance of the forgiveness of sins. And we had that new covenant living dwelling among us through his spirit. And as we go forth, knowing that we serve the God who is able, knowing that we serve the God who will deliver, knowing that we can have that, but faith, but even if not, why? Because our God has delivered. Our God has overcome. Our God has sustained us through the shedding of his blood, through the breaking of his body. Let us hold on and celebrate that truth. In Christ's name we pray, amen.